Time to rid the world of weapons! You gave it its best one ever! Iron Man is a landmark film in the history of superhero cinema. It laid the groundwork for the entire MCU. It has humor. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Heart. And kick-ass action. But it also set the unfortunate MCU trend of a bland villain whose motivations are, well, this guy's evil. Obadiah Stane had the makings of a great villain. He has a personal relationship with Tony Stark, and he's an image of what Tony could become without moral restraints. But in my opinion, the movie takes this a little too far when it's revealed that he was behind the kidnapping of Tony and the selling arms to terrorists. It's just too big of a risk for a businessman to take. Why make a few extra bucks selling Stark-branded weapons to terrorists when it could cost you lucrative U.S. military contracts? But then I remember this line. Weapons that will help steer the world back on course. Put the balance of power in our hands. Why does he say our hands? Who is he working with? So I've got one tiny theory slash retcon that could straighten all this out. What if Obadiah Stane was actually in Hydra? Now I first posed this theory way back in 2014 on a website called Movie Pilot. You guys remember Movie Pilot? Man, I miss that site. Trust me, pieces of this fit together perfectly. Howard Stark was secretly head of S.H.I.E.L.D. for years, or at least part of their ruling council. Remember that since the 1940s, Hydra agents slowly infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D., extending their reach into all aspects of the organization. But Hydra wanted to have access to the leadership. They knew that Peggy Carter and Howard Stark couldn't be turned, so they did the next best thing. They turned Obadiah Stane, Howard's best friend and business partner. Even though Obadiah isn't privy to any of Howard's S.H.I.E.L.D. activities, now Hydra has a confidant close to Howard who can feed them information about his weapons designs. And then in 1991, Hydra seized their chance to eliminate Howard and take control of Steve Rogers' blood. Only, how did they know that Howard and Marie would be driving on that road? They were told by Obadiah. He had every motivation to seize Stark killed. For a few years afterwards, he was given full control of the company, and he embedded Hydra operatives within Stark Industries. But then, Tony turned 21, and technically, he takes over the company. But he has no interest in the boring day-to-day -day operations. He just wants to make stuff. It annoys Obadiah that Tony's given all the credit, but he puts up with it because Tony keeps making weapons. After all, he calls him... Oh, yes. This is all pretty standard corporate stuff. Obadiah is a businessman, he wants to make money, he wants to move up in the ladder, get more power, etc, etc, etc. So why does Obadiah suddenly start working with terrorists? This is a huge heel turn. Now you could argue that he was supplying arms to both sides to make sure that the war never ends and that people still need weapons, which the United States has done constantly over the decades. But like I said earlier, this is a huge risk for his business, and it's not like the United States needed more incentive to buy weapons to fight terrorists. But what if Stain didn't have a profit motive in mind. What if, as part of Hydra, he was simply trying to make the world as chaotic as possible? After all, this was Hydra's MO all along. Hydra created a world so chaotic that humanity is finally ready to sacrifice its freedom to gain its security. And like Stain says, Weapons that will help steer the world back on course, put the balance of power in our hands. They want to stir up chaos, so they will be the ones to step in and take control. And who are all these people taking Stain to meet with the Ten Rings? Did he really have a staff so loyal to only him that they wouldn't whistleblow about selling weapons to people who hate America? All of these people must have been Hydra as well. This would also explain the other strange twist in Iron Man, that Stain hired the Ten Rings to assassinate Tony Stark. Why would he do this? After all, Tony was... Oh, yes. Tony keeps making weapons and drowning himself in booze and women. He doesn't even realize that his own weapons were being sold to terrorists, with his logo still painted on the side. Tony was contained and churning out weapons for Hydra's use, so why kill him? Some of you know where I'm going with this, Zola's algorithm. This was, of course, a program designed by Hydra scientist Arnim Zola to detect potential threats to Hydra. The climax of Winter Soldier was about stopping the project inside helicarriers from using the algorithm to kill millions of potential threats. But remember, the algorithm was already in use before this. Jasper Sitwell even identifies a few of its targets. Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, anyone who's a threat. And at this point, Strange was still a surgeon, not even close to becoming a superhero. So if the algorithm is that sophisticated, it must have identified Tony Stark as a potential threat. That's why Obadiah ordered Tony's death, even though it worked against his own interests, because Hydra ordered it to happen. Ironically, ordering the hit on Tony only made him more of a threat. The Hydra theory also explains one other strange plot twist in Iron Man. Pepper finds out that Stain is working with terrorists, so she rats him out the shield. So then Stain steals the prototype armor and goes 
goes on a rampage, trying to kill Pepper and causing a ruckus on the streets of LA. It's so weird to me that he does this, if you think about it logically. I understand he's trying to use the armor to escape the law like Tony used it to escape the cave. But where is he going to go in this thing? Why escalate from corporate bad guy suit to hands-on murderer? It could be that deep down, he's always been a murderous psycho, and that's fine, I guess. But I think it makes more sense if he was secretly delivering this armor to Hydra. After all, where else would he go? Now he'll be hunted to the ends of the earth. S.H.I.E.L.D. would track him down and the armor. He'd be lucky if he found a buyer, let alone the means to reproduce his own private army of Iron Man suits. But if he was delivering the suit to Hydra, then they would have the resources to hide him, reproduce the suits, and give him a seat at the high table, ruling the world. And no, I don't think Jon Favreau and Kevin Feige planned this twist. They barely planned out the movie. But they also didn't plan on Loki's scepter being the Mind Stone, and that retcon worked out great. I know this will never be addressed in the movies, but I would love to see this retcon worked into the MCU. And they've done this before. Remember Powers Booth's evil Security Council member in the Avengers? Director. You were closer than any of our subs. Well, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. revealed that he was also a member of HYDRA. Together. We are supposed to take over the world. Do you think Obadiah could have been a member of HYDRA? Do you think he was a hair too evil in Iron Man? Let me know your thoughts down in yonder comments. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.